As I said at the top of the show, today we're going to look back at the recently concluded short session of the General Assembly. And joining us first to talk about what happened are, we have Justin Parmenter. Now, Justin is a seventh grade teacher in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools. Justin has become is one of the more prolific writers and spokespeople for teacher issues in North Carolina. So you may recognize his name. And next to him is Dr. Shirley Prince. Dr. Prince is a, uh, a seasoned school administrator and a very well-respected executive director of the North Carolina Principals and Assistant Principals Association. So thank you both for being here. Now, Justin, I want to start with you. The short session just ended. When it started on the first day was the day of the teacher march. And you were here. That's right. I was. Um, so you and about, uh, estimated about almost 20,000 of your uh, colleagues across North Carolina uh, descended on Raleigh to, to sort of make your voices heard. So tell us now that the session is over. Were teachers' voices heard? Did you see some things that um, uh, you were hoping to see? Well, May 16th was an incredible day. I mean, it was, a, it was a, as you mentioned, a massive display of discontent on the part of teachers. And it, I think it really built a strong sense of community and empowered teachers and enabled us to share information about the conditions that we face all over the state. I think most teachers that were, that were here in Raleigh on May 16th would agree that um, the, the requests that we made of the General Assembly were not met. In the short session, and and, and I'm and I'm and I'm, I mean, I'm just guessing. I don't want to put words in your mouth. You probably didn't expect everything. Certainly not in the, in what would be called a short session. But um, um, some of the things we were out there with our cameras for Education Matters, and um, you know, we heard a lot of things around school supplies and textbooks and just general resources. Were those the kind of things you were at least hoping to see some progress on? Yeah, we were hoping to see progress there. And I think you know, one of the big things we were hoping to see progress on was some help with our capital needs. And there was a big missed opportunity when the, the bond was not put on the general election ballot for November there. Yeah, that's something we've, we've definitely talked about on the show, and I think we'll, we'll get into that in the next, with our next guest, too. Um, Shirley, I want to ask you, uh, we've talked, we've had you on the show, and we've actually had several principals on talking about the new principal pay plan. There were some changes made, but there were some, because there were some questions about a negative impact on veteran principals. Um, I guess, first of all, um, what happened, sort of what did the legislature do, and sort of how do you feel about it right now? Sure. Um, first, I, I think the General Assembly should be commended for the amount of additional revenue that they've put into the principal pay plan. The last two years, $52 million, and that was a result of a lot of attention being focused on the importance of the role of the principal and the very low ranking nationally We've in their about, pay. About 50th right? nationally. Correct, yeah. correct. So we're very pleased with that and we're very pleased that our, we had a, a list of improvements that we wanted and our two priority improvements were addressed and that was to increase base pay and that was increased by 6.9% and also to extend the hold harmless, which was done for one more year. There are other structural uh, type improvements that we will be seeking. Right. Um, we really had a short session this time. Right, and was. so those situations, th those improvements really didn't have time to get addressed, but we have a number of them. Right. Um, one in particular is we believe that experience needs to be recognized in some sort of fashion. And um, you know, all the research shows experience does matter. As a matter of fact, it is the most clearly identified variable when you're looking at the effectiveness of principles. It's the experience level. Don't you think that's true in a lot? I mean, that, oh, yeah. that seems to be true in a lot of. I mean, look. I mean, we're talking to, to to Justin again about teachers, but the experience matters in, oh. in all walks of life. Absolutely, yeah. And and the other situation that we have with our veteran principals, uh, I think it's one of the things that we advocated for Keith was that the principal salary schedule be tied to the teacher salary schedule. Similarly, uh, in a similar way that the assistant principal salary schedule ultimately uh, was adjusted so that if you're a teacher, once you become an assistant principal, your pay increases by 19%. We don't have that structure for principals. So consequently, last year, 44% of the principals were being, uh, were, were being paid as either a teacher or an assistant principal because they would make more by, by being gotcha. on that salary schedule. Well, I, I want to get back, since, since we're on the topic of pay, I mean, that was one of the things that, that I observed. Um, the, the 
teachers weren't really talking a lot about pay. I mean, in, in some ways, unfortunately, teachers kind of accept, we know we're not going to get paid a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but it was the other things, right? You've been in, in the classroom for more than 20 years. What, That's I mean, right. what else is, what sort of, what is the condition right now? Well, I think most, most teachers, the ultimately our, our goal is that our students will have a decent environment to learn in, that they'll be provided with the, with the resources and conditions that they need um, for, for learning to take place, and that's not currently what we have right now. What about the, uh, there was a lot of talk early on in the session about school safety and, and, and sort of uh, more support for mental health. Um, um, what did you see coming out of the, of the short session on sort of more support like that for you as a teacher? to help you support the you know, children who are dealing with issues? Mm -hmm. Well, I thought the work that the House Select Committee on School Safety did um, was fantastic. I thought they were very honest in addressing the importance of school support staff and, and the current ratios that we have, which are so far below the recommended levels. Uh, unfortunately, that, that didn't really translate into a lot of action during the session. Right, yeah, that's, I mean, I mean there were a lot of, a lot of some number of bills, but really nothing kind of that, that gave anything significant on that. Speaking of, of preparation, General Assembly has put some more dollars into, and in, in fact, your organization um, you know, is, is real involved in, in principal preparation. Are we moving in, the, in a good direction there in North Carolina? A absolutely. Um, we have um, five programs that are funded through a grant that the General Assembly established. And these five programs are using best practices across the board to really select the absolute best candidates to be prepared for the principalship, supporting them extensively throughout their preparation period, um, full-time, fully released residencies where they're coached and mentored. And so, yeah, we just graduated 118 candidates. So that's 118 very well-prepared individuals that are now in the principal pipeline and quite a few of them already placed. Right. Last word from you, Justin. What's your um, um, biggest, I get biggest disappointment? Uh, sort of what didn't happen. I think the biggest disappointment would be the 1.9 billion dollars in, in capital needs that we could have gotten if voters had approved it in November. Right. Very good. Look, thank you both for being here. It raised a lot of good issues. We're going to talk some more about it with our next guest. Thank you. Now, when we come back, we do have two get more guests from some research and advocacy groups here to get their take on the session. But before we go to break, see if you can answer this question. This session, the General Assembly passed six amendments to the North Carolina Constitution for this November's ballot. How many constitutional amendments have been proposed in total in the previous 25 years?